Do you find yourself lecturing your kids? <laughs> I sure do. Well, luckily not anymore, but man, it is a common problem for me, for all of us. And today in this video, I want to talk about how to get out of that and why lecturing your kids just isn't going to work. Hi, I'm Brett, your favorite shrink, and welcome, welcome back to My Five Minds. This is where we're learning a new psychology, a new psychology called systemology. It's a new neuropsychology that helps us understand how the brain is working. And how your brain works really applies to how we parent, because you as a parent are, are talking to one part of your child's brain, but what you're going to see with this video is that your child's brain is hearing you in a different part. And that different part of the brain is making, making it difficult for your child to really understand what you need. And in fact, is probably creating the opposite of what you want. So let's talk about today. Let's talk about Julie. Now, Julie came in, she's, you know, a normal, frustrated mom. She has two boys. And the boys, um, yeah, they're typical guys. They're typical boys. Video games, a um, little bit on the lazy side. They want to do as minimum as possible. And um, if they could, they would just play. Play all day long. And so it's always, it's always avoid, 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 avoid. And then, you know, go play, go play as much as they can. Now, Julie's frustrated, as anybody would be. Julie's super frustrated with her kids. And so she'll oftentimes lecture them. Talk about um, how video games are affecting their self-esteem. Talk about how, um, you know, this long term is going to create patterns for them. That's going to help them. Uh, that's really going to prevent them from being successful in life. She'll lecture them about... Um, you know, thinking that you're going to be a gamer for a life profession is just not realistic. Uh, what any of them, all of them need to do is they really need to focus on their studies and on and on she goes to try and help them see that what they're doing isn't going to do it, isn't going to work. Well, to me and you, all of that sounds totally reasonable. Uh, we would tell Julie, yeah, that... You're, you're right on track. These are the messages that your kids need to hear. Trouble is, they're not hearing them. It's not that they're not a good message, or it's not that what she's saying isn't true or right. The problem is, they're not hearing it. They're not getting it. And that's where Julie needs to change. Change the pattern. Because... Um, as I said before, I think the lectures are even causing the boys to avoid, avoid everything she's saying and pretty much negate it, pretty much push it out the window. So her best intentions, her best ideas, her best thoughts, her best hopes for them are actually becoming the opposite. Now, let me help you understand your brain to help you understand why. Why is that happening? Well, you have to understand again that, that our brain is five parts. It's not just one thing. It is five different things. We've talked about this a lot. Hopefully, you've seen some of the other videos. If you haven't, check them out. But we're talking about the five brains, and one of them is Leo, your left neocortex. That's the logical part of your brain, the part of you that plans and problem solves. Where is Julie coming from? clearly she's coming from the logic part of her brain. She's trying to help her boys see the logic of what, of, of what she's trying to share, but also the logic of, in terms of consequences of what they're doing. Now, here's the problem with that. Their prefrontal cortex, that logical part of their brain, ain't working. And it isn't going to really come online. Some of the research recently is showing 25 it used to show 18, 19. Now we're looking at 25, maybe even 30. So 
she's trying to appeal to a part of their brain that isn't operating and, and isn't going to be able to absorb and really take in what she's saying. But there is another part of her brain, or their brain, that is hearing this. This is the base brain. The base brain is the brain stem. And the brain stem works on a very simple programming. The simple programming is it wants to avoid things that feel bad and it wants to seek things that feel good. That is their logic. That is the logic of uh, their child, the child's brain. So what, what mom is doing, what Julie's trying to do, is, is she's trying to create motivation. And in fact, there's a word for it. It's called negative reinforcement. She's trying to create a reinforcement schedule for the boys that is going to help motivate them. But it actually isn't motivating. It's demotivating. Let me explain again. <laughs> negative reinforcement is, is not the same as punishment. Negative reinforcement is kind of like the opposite of positive reinforcement. Positive reinforcement is you do something I like and I give you a cookie. I give you a reward. I give you a pat on the back. I say, good job. You did something and then I reward it. Negative reinforcement is that someone is put in a negative environment. If there is a, a screeching siren ah, ripping through your ears and then if you do something like push that button right over there, and that shuts off that screeching siren, then, then you get rewarded. Oh, oh, that feels so much better. I'm gonna, as soon as I hear that screeching siren, I'm gonna push that button again. So every time the screeching siren goes, I push the button. I'm getting reinforced because the negative is being taken away whenever I do the right behavior. That's what nagging is. That's what Julie is doing with her kids is she's putting on this negative reinforcement. She's lecturing, 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 talking, 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 talking. And the hope is unconsciously, the hope is the kids are going to go and do what they're supposed to do. So mom won't lecture them anymore. Kind of makes sense, but it doesn't work. And again, it doesn't work because the kids are operating on a different system. The kids are operating off avoid pain and seek pleasure. Mom, homework, um, chores, all of those things are associated with pain. And the more mom lectures, the more the kids associate mom and all of her talking with pain. And so what's that? What's their brain want to do with that? It wants to avoid. It wants to avoid mom. It wants to avoid chores. It wants to avoid homework. All of that is associated with pain. What is pleasure? Gaming. I want to do more gaming. When I'm in game mode, I feel good. And I don't hear mom's lectures. I don't hear mom's... And so it's like reinforcing for me to get on the video games because I get to tune her out. Well, that's the wrong direction. That's, that, we don't want to reinforce them using games, but that's what she's doing. Now, a better strategy for mom, a better strategy for Julie, we talked about in our session, was I said, Julie, you got this backwards. What you're doing is that you're chasing the boys around, chasing them to try and get them to do what you want them to do. And, and you're using your lecturing to try and provide that negative reinforcement to get them to do it. We got to flip this around. We got to flip this around so the boys are chasing you. What's that look like? What's that mean? Well, right now she's trying to get them to do things and they're trying to avoid her as much as possible. But if she is the holder of all the keys, if she's the one in charge, the one powerful one who has all of what they want and they see her as holding pleasure, then they're going to want to seek that out. They're going to want to go towards her because she has pleasure. And so here she has to set up a new schedule, a new way of reinforcing back to positive reinforcement. And that is you want to play your video games. Cool. I need you to do your homework first. And if you don't want to, if you don't like doing homework, that's okay. 
But if you want pleasure, if you want to feel good, if you want to seek positive things, if you want to have positive things in your life, then then you need to do this negative stuff and then come to me, show me, prove me, demonstrate to me that you did those positive things, and then I'll reward you. Now mom is seen as a pleasure center. Mom is seen as, as the person that gives joy or gives what we want. And so now the boys are motivated to please mom. They're motivated to give mom what she wants so she'll give them what they want. It's a positive reinforcement schedule. It's going to work 10 times better for you. And it worked 10 times better for Julie instantly, almost instantly. She got positive results because she started setting up reward systems. You do X amount of chores or homework or whatever it is, you get X amount of video time. You get rewarded. And all of that lecturing and all of that talking that Julie was doing, I got her to stop doing it. Few words. In fact, the one word I only wanted her to use was, sure, yes, fine. What do you got to do to get that? Yeah, you can have video games. Yeah, you can play. Yeah, you can do whatever you want. What are you going to do over here in terms of chores, responsibilities, and homework to earn that? They're in charge of their own consequences. They're in charge of their own behaviors in terms of the negative behaviors. They have to fix or do any of these things so they can earn the reward. And all of our talking, lecturing, gone. Because it's not effective. Now I'm going to encourage you to do the same in your situations with kids, with spouses, at work, with employees. It doesn't matter. It's all the same. Lecturing is only going to be their brain see you as a negative, And then they're going to avoid you. Don't lecture. Stop lecturing. Set up positive rewards for sure. But you've got to get rid of the negative consequences, the negative reinforcement schedule. Now, I want to hear. I want to hear about how that worked. I want to hear about your life. And I also want to hear about if you have situations that you need help with, put them in the comments because I want to be able to help you be better. You. Again, I'm Brett, your favorite drink. And you, you're watching us here on my five minds.